Yes. Well, it's an impossible question, and so I gave up trying to answer it. There's no one, because what's been great about my journey is that it's about news. It's about science. It's about culture. It's about uh, sports and entertainment. It's a range of human endeavor, so that there's not one. If you talk about political interviews, I think the most timely probably was with Vladimir Putin a couple of years ago. Uh, because at the moment he had not been heard from. So one, one mark of, a, of an interview that, that's, uh, that attracts a lot of attention is that somebody speaks who has not spoken before in a long time. Sean Penn, same thing. He had never talked about what happened with El Chapo until he talked to me. And that turned out to be you know, one of the highest rated shows for, PBS, for um, 60 Minutes in seven or eight years, all the way back to 2008. But what really makes a difference, you know, is there real engagement? Uh, has, does somebody really give you, you know, and feel like that they are massaging the question? They're looking within themselves, uh, within their experience, to tell you something, often something you haven't heard before. That's what makes a good one. So I can tell you what makes a good interview rather than who would necessarily be the best. Uh, or the worst. Well, it's a great honor because of the – for two reasons. Number one, it's a great honor because of, of what it represents, you know, electronic <laughs> journalism. Secondly, because of Paul White. Uh, I have a long history with CBS News. A number of my colleagues, all the way back to, to Frank Stanton, who was a, C, was a president of CBS and may have hired Paul White. I don't know. It would be either Frank Stanton or Bill Paley played a significant role in my life. It was Frank Stanton uh, that was sort of the bridge for me to go to PBS. And he was a great friend of mine, and, and uh, I owe him a debt of gratitude. He was an early recipient of that, as was John Kennedy and, and lots of other people, as was my CBS colleagues like Charlie Corralt, who was a great North Carolina friend. And you go down the list of people just from CBS, Mike Wallace and so many others, Jeff Fager, who's now my executive producer. All of them have received it. For that reason, it's a great honor. Secondly, it is because when your peers choose to honor you, you take that seriously because they understand the demands of the profession. They understand uh, what it takes to, to make a difference in terms of storytelling. And therefore, for those, couple of those reasons, I'm honored to be here, uh, to be in this great city, to be with people that are new friends and perhaps some people I've known before in the business. Well, it's just uh, curiosity. I mean, I, I actually have to, I'm, I'm always leaning forward, um, generally. I mean, I have to say to myself, in just in terms of posture when I'm walking, the p above my torso wants to move, get there faster, and so I have to constantly say to myself, stand straight, uh, or my mother would be disappointed. So it's that, but it's also the sheer sense of, of I have a physical feeling to interviews. You know, last night I did Bono. Uh, we taped an hour with Bono last night, which will be on the PBS show tomorrow night. You know, but uh, as we're talking, I mean, I feel the where he's going, talking about music or talking about what he's trying to do in Africa, it has a physicality to me, and so I'm moving with that. You know, and the hands and everything else. I mean, there's somebody who does an impression of me who uses the hands a lot, whether it's almost like reaching over. Uh, so it's another way to connect to the people who you're engaging. The engagement in an interview uh, does not get as much credit as it should. You can take somebody that can engage with an interviewee and knows how to, in a sense, uh, in, and knows how to stimulate their own uh, sense of adventure about the answer. It's so much different than someone who you see who looks at a question, asks the question. Uh, and the questions have no arc. A, a real engagement has an arc. It has all the things that, that it's like a tennis match. So if an engagement has that, where you hit the ball will determine how I return the ball, that kind of thing. 
I'm just that I'm honored to be here, that, that I think interviews are crucial to journalism. I think we don't pay enough attention to them. It's a skill that, that some people have, I mean the great Mike Wallace and others, have a sense of being able to elicit things that produce more, uh, m that make the interviewee feel that they owe it to you to tell you what it is that they have to communicate. That's the most important thing, and I think if you do that engagement, and, it, and it, it's not, as Duke Ellington once said about music, it's not being hard or being soft. You know, what it is is, is being in search of truth, the truth of a human experience, the truth of, of an idea, the truth of an argument. That's what makes a great interview, and it has all of those things. It's, it has all kinds of rhythms to it. Thank you.